My name is Sohm Chudin, and I'm 36 years old. I'm a mother to two sons. My elder one is 14, and my younger one is 13 years. And uh, I'm an entrepreneur. My elder one, uh, he's very quiet, and uh, he's a very straightforward person. He loves eating. Younger one is very family-oriented. He's very um, sensitive. He worries a lot about the family. He's uh, with me most of the time. And he loves helping me with my home, household works and all. My hobby is to cook. I love cooking. And, uh, and pl plus I love feeding my friends and family, uh, whoever like, comes to my house. Uh, I love to cook for them. I make very good chicken chili and uh, chicken, uh, roasted chicken also. I make it very well and then most of my family and friends, they give me a good compliment about my <laughs> this chicken curry. <laughs> I was uh, raised as the only child, but as the only child, I was not like pampered because uh, since my parents are in the village, they had to do a lot of work. So my mother thought that if, if I stay in the village, uh, then my school is a little far also from my house. So they thought that it's better I go away with my aunt, uh, my second mother. She's like my second mother who raised me when I was in the school. So my and I grew up with my aunt and my two sisters, my uh, cousin sisters, and uh, I grew up in Thimpu. I, I became mother when I was in the college. Then, um, then I gave birth to my elder son at 21, when I was 21. So then, uh, yeah, that that was the time I became parent. And uh, that time I I was not like uh, more, you know, like uh, into a mother would because I don't know how to breastfeed and you know and then I had to learn how to breastfeed because in traditional way like when our Putinis mother they used to sleep and then feed you know I didn't know what to, like how to feed that so I always have to like wake up every now and then you know every after one hour when I'm sleeping so that was the most tough tough thing you know like I had to wake up then again I had to pick up the baby and put it on my lap and feed you know the, him and all so that was that is the most challenging thing and also like while taking bath you know our button is uh, we put uh, water in the tub and then we put the baby on our hand or something I feel very scared you know like <laughs> so I had uh, you know uh, so I had to get help from my mother uh, for that uh, you know taking bath and feeding and everything like my mother has to wake me up like oh you you know you have to feed your baby you wake up and all yeah good morning after 12 years of my marriage then i got separated from my uh, ex-husband this is not for the same that time when I got uh, divorced, I was like 30, 30 years old. I, uh, then that time you, you're not that, you're just entering into, you know, like 30, 30s. So you feel very like uh, left out, you know, like you just feel that, oh, now I'm just like divorced as if like I have lost something from the, everything. My whole life has ended, you know, like that. I felt like that. Oh, everything ended now. How am I going to look after my two kids? I'm jobless in my family, you know. So it's like uh, once you have this kind of uh, feeling when you get divorced, now um, when, you're, when you get mature, you know, I just feel, I don't have any regret in my marriage. Like I have done my part as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter-in-law, whatever, you know. Like, uh, so I have no regret. I've tried my best. Uh, during the, you know, my marriage, I have no regret. They never fe feel that we are separated because I let them keep in touch with uh, him through media, you know. They talk to him. 
So even right now also I am giving the best I could uh, because I never let them feel that they are left out without a father because I'm, I always try my best to be a father to them and a mother also. Born of all that is, I am, as Pierre de Chardin said, a spiritual being having a human experience. After the separation, uh, after my separation, there are a lot of difficulties I faced. Because I didn't have any financial, you know, like, uh, like uh, when I got divorced, I was like fully, you know, with a zero balance in my account. <laughs> and then I didn't have any financial help also. And my parents, I had to depend on my parents. And uh, they helped me a lot. Luckily, my parents were like, there for me. Otherwise, if it was like uh, some other women who didn't have parents and no job and left with, with uh, two kids, you know, then I think uh, it was it would have been a very difficult thing for me. The most difficult part was I was facing is because uh, I was thinking, what am I going to do now, you know? Because I was dependent on my husband at that time. He was working, so he was looking after the house. So I was thinking, oh, he left, now how am I going to survive, you know? How am I going to give my children? Then uh, how am I going to, uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, satisfy all those needs at home, you know, like, uh, then uh, I was thinking, like, what am I going to do now? I used to listen to those uh, very encouraging kind of uh, words from YouTube, you know, like, motivational talk. So that helped me a lot. So I used to uh, listen to those things. I used to watch those videos. Then it made me feel very, you know, like, uh, comfortable with my divorce. Then I thought, uh, no, I shouldn't uh, stay like this. I have, uh, you know, because when my children comes back from school, then they come to me, you know. They again, uh, they, uh, they come and they see me in the same situation in the locked up in the room. They feel very, you know, like uh, something very sad, you know, because father is not also not present and mom is always at home, just covered up in the blanket, you know, then in the dark room. It's, so I just felt like it's not fair for them, you know. Then I decided um, it's not fair for my two kids, even for my parents, you know, they raised me to live this life, you know, and look after them. Uh, then, uh, so why should I, you know, d get burdened with all this divorce? Then I came out of my, that shell, you know, then I decided I should do something. And even if I, because at the uh, first week, we are not able to start anything, you know, because of the zero balance. <laughs> I was really financially nil. I didn't have any uh, kind of savings also because I spent everything in my house or whatever, like built a house, then looked after everything. So that's why um, then I started thinking that uh, I should do something as a single parent to look after my two kids. Even if I'm not happy, I have to be happy for these two kids, you know. Then slowly, slowly, then I started to uh, talk to my uh, these two kids. I dropped them to school, then I went to pick them up. Then they, you know, actually, then I just let them feel that their their father is like like present, you know. So I I was like very supportive for them, and even I tried to talk to my parents and all. So my parents were very happy after what I have decided. They they said like it's not the end of the world, you know. It's not only you that you have come through this divorce. There are every kind of uh, uh, you know parent in this in the entire world that they are separated. So if it doesn't work, then it's your life you have to lead ahead. He, he, is, he decided to leave and then lead his own life. And why you have to bog down, you know, like that, and then just destroy your whole life. You have two kids, so you just live, you know, live your life. And then it's not, it's not the only person you got divorced with. You have a lot of opportunities coming, you know, ahead of you. So don't stay like this. Then they, or even my family, they try to, you know, like encourage me and all. So then I decided to move on. My mother who saved me. It's very beautiful, you know, when your kids grow up and your kids just uh, knows how to talk, you know, and then they can come to you. And they, when, when you cry, you know, like they will come to wipe up your tears and say, what is wrong with you? It is not like, you know, when, us, when my, uh, this uh, younger son, when I was going through divorce and I was crying and he said, why are you crying, you know? Why are you crying? You didn't do anything wrong. 
You just live, you know, like that. And look at us, you know. We are there for you. So I will always look after you. I'll not leave you, you know. He, his words, you know, like those kind of words touch, touches you, you know. And then you, you feel like, oh, I have to do something for my kids. I shouldn't be like this. You know, actually, I was running a homestay, and uh, this homestay was doing well. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of guests from India and then some other part of the world. And then a lot of the travel agencies, they used to uh, send their guests in my homestay and all. So I used to serve people, you know, and I was the cook. I used to cook for them and then, and people love, uh, like, uh, love my place and they, they were there. But due to this COVID, you know, pandemic time, then everything stopped, you know, the tourism, it was very bad. So then I got stuck, like, what to do now, you know? If you're, if you really want to, like, don't want to give up, then there's always something coming up, you know? Then I thought that, oh, since I love cooking and I have, I'm very good in cooking, so I should start something, you know, from home. Before only I wanted to make pickle. So I used to make a small, small, like, bottles of pickle at home, my own. Then I start. I thought that it's better. I make uh, start making this homemade pickle. Then, uh, then I got help from uh, CSI. I applied my uh, loan uh, to CSI, and then CSI has given me a small financial help on uh, this uh, uh, homemade pickle. And then I started b uh, by doing this. I started cooking when I was in third grade, so almost it was, uh, I think I was around uh, nine years old. So that time when my parents are working in the field, so I used to make tea and uh, I used to cook rice. So that time it was very dangerous for us to play with fire, you know. but then, uh, uh, and then I saw my grandmother cooking on the mud stove, you know, and then I always enjoy cooking on the mud stove. It gives me joy, like when I see fresh vegetables in the garden, you know, it makes me feel like uh, cook more, you know, for my friends, my family, you know, and then when they compliment my food, so I, give, I get more encouragement. So I love cooking. <laughs> Last October, I started doing First, I tried to experience at home, like, uh, because, uh, you know, while making pickle, we need to uh, be very careful because to store a pickle, it will, if you don't store it well, and because uh, if you sell to somebody else, the fungus and everything comes inside. So I, first I had to try, you know, I had to try all the ingredients, like what, uh, what to put inside and how long I can keep, you know, I can store. So I had to experience myself, and then only I started uh, to sell you know in the market and i created my own page also and from instagram uh, i didn't have that financial uh, strong financial thing uh, to uh, go for this uh, website so i thought that instagram and facebook is the best thing we don't have to pay also and i have a lot of uh, friends so each of them passed to another friend and then it started to spread words and then it started well <laughs> When I make pickle, I always uh, make with lots of you know care, love, and then from my heart, because whatever you're making, you should make with your love and care, you know. And if you're not interested to make anything like that, so it will not turn out well. But uh, what I do is I care about people's hygiene also, and uh, I'm very much concerned about that, because uh, what I do is I first boil my I. Actually, people tell me to make in the plastic. I don't uh, like plastic uh, bottles because plastic, it's not very, uh, you know, like kind of healthy. So what I do is I buy bottles only. And bottles, I, what I do, do is I sterilize, I boil it uh, on the gas for around uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Then I just take it out and then I put it in the oven and then I make it dry, you know, complete dry. Then I take it out and then let it cool down. And then only then I uh, store it inside. 
in the bottle. Then I do the bottling. It takes the whole day because I have to make with lots of care and uh, I have to make sure that uh, the bottle, like from, starting from bottle, I have to sterilize and then make sure that it's really deep fry, fried. And then if it is not deep fried, then uh, the fungus forms. So I have to make it everything dry. It takes the whole day. My pickle, I make without tasting powder plus it's all made with love and care from my home starting from the chili powder I never put like Indian chili or nothing it's just from everything from uh, garden starting from uh, pepper thingy thingy also we grow near our house so I take it from there and then uh, chili powder then some necessary stuff which I which we don't get here then that also I make sure I wash it very properly cook and then anyway uh, it takes a lot of time yeah cuz number madam khasangani nale ma'am order normally nale ba ki tai bala top tier mo ma'am sasna suno me if any shredded beef then uh, beef uh, just shakam then dry fish dile garlic the thinge lapu neutrala tofu de tela Right now, I'm a little bit lack of financial uh, thing, but uh, I have uh, applied a proposal to the bank for, uh, you know, like more kind of uh, improvement for the technical part, because I want to buy some, uh, some kind of a machine to make it more easier for me. Because right now, I'm the only one. I have to do all the manual work, you know, like uh, hand washing this that so I'm just trying to focus on a mission mission where I don't have to uh, you know spend waste my time and all so with the help of bank I'm just planning to buy expand my business I don't make much because if you make in a very big quantity it will spoil all the taste also and then uh, even whatever it is spoiled so I make it less less quantity whatever whoever on the orders I make it fresh and make it less. I get a lot of orders online from uh, even from Australia and then from US they, they try to you know they see my <laughs> this pickle and they try to tell uh, like tell me like can you please uh, you know send it to US or Australia so I think it's like doing well and in the community locality my locality everyone buys from me I never used to sell in the shop from my home only they used to come and pick up and then I used to deliver to Thimpo, Punakha, Bumtang and all that. I want to see myself uh, doing very well, where, like, uh, where I can um, support all my family, my two kids. I want them, to, uh, I want to see them, you know, uh, they graduated and then uh, then I, uh, me doing my, that's, you know, like the same, continuing my own business and then uh, in a very better way. <laughs> uh, right now my kids are still, you know, growing and the stage of teenager. So I need to spend some time with them also. And uh, the business also, I yeah, have to entertain people, you know, like mostly my business is online. You, So it's like I really have to, you know, post the picture then then talk to the people, then this thing. So mostly I'm on the phone. So I have to give some time to the children also and mostly on my business also. 
and sometimes I have to, I have to run up and down, you know. So I just feel that, oh, I, do I lack in my motherhood, you know? Am I lacking something due to my, you know, business? So it's up to us, like, we have to balance everything. So then it will go smoothly. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Since I love cooking and my, even my sons, they love cooking. So mostly I spend uh, them uh, in cooking, like making pizza, baking, cookies, you know, and I teach them how to make dal and all, you know, like, <laughs> you know, the Bhutanese food. I let them, during their break, I let them peel my garlic, but then ginger and all like that to help me. We go in the weekend market together and then he carries my basket. So, you know, I'm a proud mom. Now he can carry basket. I can buy vegetable, put in the basket. He don't let me carry, he carries. And then uh, sometimes in the evening, uh, you know, we go for walk. And, uh, and we even play basketball outside sometimes. And then uh, during the weekends, if we have a good movie on the TV, then we watch movie together. It's an advantage for all the women, those who work from home, because we get to get uh, to work and then, uh, and then even spend time with family. And then uh, our kids, they will know how hard, uh, you know, hard working our parents are. So they understand the value of money, you know. Money is not easy to, like, make. So we have to put a lot of hard work. So that shows some value also. His favorite recipes is his grandmother's version of a dog bowl using chicken. Don't, uh, you know, kind of uh, always depend on your husband. Like, uh, don't think that your husband is working and I can just enjoy on his, uh, you know, whatever salary and all. So it's just that I can work, be at home. Yes, if you don't want to work and uh, be at home and to look after your kids, do something like from home, you know. Be a small entrepreneur, just like me sometimes. If you're good in cooking, bake something or cook something and then you... Because nowadays uh, people love homemade things, you know. So we can just make like homemade cookies and then send it to the shop. And it's like, you know, you're running a house that you only don't have to depend on your husband's salary. You can just uh, do small, small things with that, you know. If you are unemployed and you have a, you know, like a, you have a land, invest in that, grow vegetables, sell vegetables, don't feel shy, you know. Be ready to face everything, like go sell, uh, even if you sell doma also, you're doing it for your family, you know. And if you're uh, selling some kind of uh, chips, in the, you know, like street also. Don't feel shy, do it as a woman, you know. Because whatever you're doing, you're not stealing, you know. You're doing it for your family. So do everything, take everything as an opportunity to make money, you know. I feel very nice, you know, I feel great that I've come through a lot, you know. I am very much satisfied. I'm very happy and I'm very fully satisfied. But then I have more, more to do and more to move on. And I'm looking forward for a very successful, you know, life ahead. <laughs>